Hey everybody, welcome back. It's vlog number two. Today's February 15th, 2018. It's a Thursday. And today I'm out here reorganizing my nursery area. Have you seen some of my previous videos? Actually, I've never displayed my garden before or how I built it, but I built it from lasagna beds. And right now I've got garlic, some lettuce left, broccoli. That's not doing so good because I planted it way too late. So I'm just gonna have to pull these out. Got too busy and didn't have time to plant the broccoli for myself, so. It's not something I norm I grow commercially. So now what I have is this gigantic mess here. And basically what I've done is I've moved my seedling table over. I've taken out most of this garden bed here. And I'm giving myself some more time to think about it. I always like to think about things for a while before I make a final move. Uh, especially because this is kind of a, a really important permanent area where I'm starting all of my plants. So I'm going to take out this little chunk for now. And actually it's fine because in the winter, this piece of the bed right here never even got any sun. Um, so it wasn't the best place to grow stuff in the winter. In the summer, of course, you get everything, but uh, it's such a small area to grow that I'm thinking that it'll be just way more beneficial if it's a nursery area. And maybe I could focus a little more on growing more nursery stock stuff and that would make up for the profit loss that I lose from this little bit of garden which I really just considered my personal garden. So I never grew stuff here that was very profitable. You know, I grew a little bit of lettuce, but this is garlic and broccoli. Oh, so yeah, and I also wanna tell you guys about a couple mistakes that I made uh, regarding some plants I planted and starting seeds. So let's check that out. So this broccoli here, I planted way too late. Because of that, and because we had such a warm winter, these never developed a head. And it's all good. I planted these a month late. Basically, these are just gonna to have to come up as you can see, there's a lot of aphids growing on them. So I'll just feed these to the chickens. You know, I could let them survive a little longer because I'm getting close to making a compost pile. And then here's the other little mistake that I made. So when I started all of my summer stuff, I had this table over sitting there. And right there, it only gets like an hour of sun every day from an, an angled off sun. Now this side of the wall is facing south, so it gets sun all day long. Oh, I finished my other table. So now I gotta do is just put my either shade cloth or plastic or I have a frost blanket and then I'm gonna make like a mini greenhouse out of that. So I'm pretty stoked. I can do quite a bit of 1020 trays now. And what I ended up having to do, cause I, this was in the shade and I wasn't ready to make the decision to, to get rid of this garden. I wasn't thinking like that yet. So these were sitting in the shade for too long. At the time we were having really warm temperatures in the 80 degrees. So I was hoping that even though they weren't in direct sunlight that they would still sprout, but I was wrong. I should have made this move sooner to get them into some direct light to start putting heat into these cups um, and causing germination. When seeds don't get enough warmth, they won't germinate. Yeah, that was a major mistake. It just took twice as long as it should have so these are gonna a lot of these will come up but i planted a lot of backups too in soil blocks a lot of the soil blocks here are all backups for the summer stuff that i planted like one week later so here's a lot of my better stuff that was sitting in the sun most of the time all the tomatoes these are italian squash tomatoes lower down here not so good as a sprouting percentage so anyways what it really made me realize is that I needed a way better nursery setup, and that's why I started building these tables. And then the other day I was like, oh man, I just need to, I just need to move this table. And you know what? Maybe I should just make this entire area into a nursery area because seed starting is so important. And it's another possible business venture if I want to make, um, you know, I can make herb propagation, tree, vine propagations from cuttings. And so let me show you guys some of my cuttings and how they're doing. So the plumeria is waking up. I've got lots of comfrey. So this guy's, this is comfrey, most important plant in the world, look it up. Uh, this is borage, it's related to comfrey. These are both a nutrient accumulating plants. This is some moringa, really amazing plant. You have to look that up, nitrogen fixing, and it also, the, the leaves are insanely nutritious. Um, figs, these are different grapes, and you can see that the buds are starting to wake up on those grapes now. There's some more, these are all different types of grapes. Uh, pomegranates and the figs are still waiting to wake up. These are some blackberries waking up. The dragon fruit set off, sent off some more nodes and is waking up. 
It's a little low quat. A lot of all these propagations here I got from the California Rare Fruit Growers, which is a really cool club in San Diego that I'm a part of. In here, I've got tons of passion fruit that I propagated from a friend's vine. Huge thanks to you, Rachel. Small corn cords that are waking up. Here's a really nice example of a blackberry waking up. You can see the bud right here and the first leaf coming out. When dormant plants wake up, they'll start from these buds on trees as well. This is a low chill Anna apple. These are really famous in San Diego because since we don't get a lot of chill hours here, they're just really loved by a lot of locals here. So yeah, that's kind of the main things going on right now. And it's the big calm before the storm right now. You know, right now there's not a lot to do in the farm. Everything's planted that can be, all the beds, all my seedlings, the nursery stock, everything's going. But we're just waiting for spring to come and waiting for those seedlings to get big enough to put them in the ground. And then we're in full summer mode. We'll see how cool it looks in the end. I love organizing things, so it'll be nice when it's all set up. And you know, it's been driving me crazy, all this crap everywhere. It takes me a lot longer to move around and, and get to places. So it's just gonna be a way more efficient setup. You know, I'm wasting tons of time walking around in frustration because I have to step over things. It's just gotten out of control. Oh, and there's one other thing I did, I'm doing recently. I just got some season extension stuff. So these are some, this is a half inch conduit. You can get that for basically $2.50 and you can bend it into a six foot wide hoop using something like this. And this is just a bar bender. So you stick the bar in here and bend it back and it makes those hoops. And you can get this, I got this from Bootstrap Farmer. They're one of my favorite newer farm suppliers. They just have awesome stuff. You can get it from Johnny Seeds and I'm sure there's many other places online to get that. Okay, and the hoops are for going over the tops of two of my 30 inch beds. So they'll go over the top and then I can put shade cloth over that in summer or a frost blanket in the winter. Um, in the winter, it'll help heat up my plants, help them grow faster, germinate faster. If there ever is a rare fro frost, which we rarely have in Lemon Grove, then that'll help protect it from that. In the summer, when it gets hot, I'm gonna use shade cloth to try and grow greens year round here in Lemon Grove. It uh, peaks out here at about 95 degrees Fahrenheit. So with a 50% shade cloth, that's gonna cut the heat enough that I can get away with growing um, so different greens like lettuce, especially mixes when I'm growing them at their baby size, they're not gonna bolt at that size. So I can get away with doing a few cuts. And if it gets too bitter, then I'll know that it's too far gone. Um, but I'm really excited to experiment with all the season extension stuff and see what kind of improvements it makes me. You know, it probably cost me four or $500 for the setup so that I can have winter and summer extension for all of my garden, plus, you know, all of this. So I'm just gonna put this on a uh, speediness. So one benefit of getting rid of this garden bed is that now I've got all this soil to use. And these were lasagna beds that I made. So a lot of this material is, you know, decomposed stuff that turned into soil. So, you know, cardboard and straw and wet green waste, and then I added a bunch of compost on top. So it's got really good soil. I've got to do one thing to it, though, because there's tons of crabgrass here, and that's what I just got off the ground. And I'm worried about it coming up and entering and, and starting its roots inside of there. So what I'm going to do to make sure all that stuff dies out and don't have any problems, I'm just going to put one of my silage tarps here on the ground, put all the dirt onto it, and then cover the whole thing up. I'll probably just let it sit like that. For a little while a little like a month i might use some of the soil here and there but um, i just want to go through it to make sure that there's no crabgrass roots in there because they're a rhizomal plant they will proliferate like crazy so i want to be real careful i don't want to take that crabgrass and then spread it to some other part of the yard so i'm just taking extra caution and storing it inside of tarp to help kind of kill off anything in there to snuff out the light All right, so I got this thing wrapped up in a tarp. And the main reason I want to have it in a tarp is because there's a bunch of crabgrass under the ground here. And I don't want the roots to grow up and then grow inside of this dirt. So that's why I'm doing it like that. I'm just taking all the precautions just in case. So what I'm gonna do with this dirt is just reuse it. And I could use it to start fresh compost piles and I could also use it to start more starts. So what I did is I reconditioned, kind of freshened up the soil. 
So I added a little bit of perlite, a little bit of azomite. I did a little bit of my roots, completely organic. Vegging fertilizer. It's a two, this is a 211 organic fertilizer. Oh, and then I did a little bit of worm castings. Okay, so then I mixed all, that all up together and that helps just like revitalize it. The worm castings added some more beneficial microbes and stuff that this may be lacking because it had dried out. You know, it's not as conditioned as it used to be because I haven't been really taking care of this garden. One of the other main reasons I'm getting rid of this garden is because crabgrass took it over and it's just going to be too much work to revitalize it. I might, you know, and I can get a much better use out of this space if I just convert it all to nursery area and storage because I just need that extra space now. And I'm really hoping that my landlords will let me do one more bed here and that'll make up for that loss of space, of grow space that I'm losing here. Okay, so I just reconditioned all my soil. I'm gonna be planting another round of patty pan squash, my cucumbers, and my chocolate cherry tomatoes because I just wanna have more backups just in case, just because these uh, did not sprout that well. I'm still expecting some of them to sprout up, but um, unfortunately, because I let the seeds sit wet for two weeks, most likely what happened under the soil is that the seeds there's you know there's i can see a little bit of green moss developing here there's so there's some mildew some that type of thing going on in the soil and then that'll just kill the seed so that's going to happen probably 50 percent of these in my guess will won't make it the the rest are going to come up like these guys have so i've got my main supply here i've got backups and soil blocks everywhere there and then this is my third round of backup. Unfortunately, I can't get this place as organized as I want because of this tarp in the way, but once I use up that soil, then it'll be nice and dialed in back here. And in the future, I'll be building another propagation table similar to this. This one I got for free, which was incredible. Just down the street, the company was going out of business, they got rid of it, so I'm hoping that I'll find some other type of, you know, at least pallets that I can use to make another table. So I'll, I might do another table I'll definitely, once this garlic comes out, I'm going to do another table right here because this area doesn't even get any sun in the winter, so forget it. And then right here, I may keep a garden bed here or I may in the future choose to make a seating table. I don't know yet. I'm just going to continue to think about it and as the, the need arises, that's when I'll take care of that. So the way I'm determining which backups to plant is I took a look at all the seedlings here and I'm just choosing the worst ones. So. The ones that have the worst sprouting percentage and that I want to have some more insurance to make sure I have enough, that would be the cucumbers, the chocolate cherries, the Amish paste, and the sunburst. So these could be backups for the initial planting, and I could even grow these a slightly longer and plant these later, uh, like a month later in another bed, or I could also sell these to other gardeners who want to have some really nice starts so lots of things I can do with these and you know doing some extra work here to make these bonuses but I have to ensure that I got uh, stuff to put in my bed so I can harvest all summer and the rest I can sell to some local people and I, that'll be great to help them get started for their summer garden as well. So I just put up a piece of burlap here that's going to cut the heat and the light a lot on some of this plastic that's on the edge right here. As the winter sun becomes the summer sun, it'll be over the top and then this won't receive any sunlight right here. But for now, I just want to protect my plastic and burlap's very cheap, so um, it's a great thing to use for shade. I really like it. I even use it as a, a shade structure for my farmer's market tables. I can just connect it to my tent and then that's a really cheap little shading uh, to protect my veggies. So I even use burlap for covering uh, carrot seed beds to help them germinate or if you have certain beds that uh, won't stay wet or in the summer when you need to help germinating, burlap or shade cloth is a great way to cover your beds and then help ensure the germination because you're keeping the soil moist. So a million uses for burlap. Um, I always have a giant roll of it around so I can use it whenever I need it. Alright guys, I think that's going to be it for today. Uh, came together pretty well. I've got a heck of a lot more space in there. You know, once I use up all the soil in that tarp, 
I can really clean things up and get it nice, but I can walk past and get around everywhere now. Got my nice burlap to protect. And then I can even walk around the whole table on the other side. Got more space here. So it worked out really well and I'm excited to have more room and have things more organized. It was driving me crazy because it's just so inefficient walking around this area. So I'm just gonna dial it in a little bit more and in the future, probably get some more tables to do more propagations and planting.